What is going on guys, we are here with OLD round 3 Lulith Bracket, we have Ojama vs Solvent, we do see a turn 1, he leads off with a Greninja, he doesn't want to give Solvent any information which a type of Greninja is it. he is, so he doesn't go for U-turn in case he's Scarf, like we don't know yet if he's Scarf or Ash, um, so he this is uh, obviously a solve with Magiona from Solvent's side, he does just go for a Volt Switch. If this is a Zardex, it's a definitely a problem for Jama because his Toxapex should be more Spadef. So if that is not defensive land, or Zardex becomes... Um, yeah, it's a huge threat. Pex should be Spadef on his team because uh, he has no good um, Ash Grin switch in otherwise. And since the Pex is more Spadef, Dragon and Earthquake both would do a lot of damage from Zardex. If this is Zard Y, um, obviously Pex walls it, and Ojama would... Ojama's play was always going packs that of scout if it's ZX or Y. So now I assume Ojama's either gonna go for Toxic for Recover or go into Lando to scout for the Earthquake. So let's talk a bit about the teams. Um, on Sovin's side, I think uh, we already know it's AV Magiana, right? So it's probably Scarf Ladi, then either Z move Coco or Z move Bulu. Probably Z move Bulu. And the Coco could be Magnet, could be Specs. Um, so Zardex, I assume it's the 3 attacks Ruth set that, uh, that has put in a lot of work lately in tour games. I reckon we've seen a few times. And the Lando, I think, is defensive on Solvent's team. So he goes hard on the Coco. I don't know if he predicted the Toxic Spike. I think he might be um, a Specs Coco. And this play was ingenious because it covered Ojama going into Lando's there because then he threatens it with HP Ice. Um, I still think he would have scouted for the Lando being Scav because I'm not sure if he would have seen if the Lando was Scav because um, the Coco would have activated Electric Surge because the Coco would have came out before because. If the Pex would have switched out, because uh, Zard is obviously faster than Pex, so Zard would have switched out first. So that uh, Volt Switch damage, I think tell her that it's um, Specs damage. That is a good chunk to the Q, I'm not 100% sure, but I assume it is Specs. Um, so Florican might come out here from Solent. He shouldn't stay in with this Q. -um. As soon as it's a Life Orb or Z move, but the Z move could also be in a Landris. Depends if the Greninja is Scarf, or like he might just not have speed control. We will find that out later. Um, but yeah, Florican might come out here, so Ojama should not go land on, he shouldn't stay in. He should always go into one of these three months, I feel like. Uh, probably one this or this. Um, so I feel like someone should always go for Volt Switch here to get uh, momentum. Yeah, um, Ojama could go into packs since the Toxic Spike is up, someone is tempted to not bring the Charizard out, and the Charizard is the one one that threatens the packs the most. Um, the Ladi could come out on the packs, but then Ojama can... Um, like, pretty much predict Solvent to go for Divog and eventually st potentially stay in with the packs or he could just like make a, a good play and going Scissor because Scissor covers a trick and a Divog play. Yeah I feel like he doesn't lose much from going packs or Mew. I guess packs the only thing you would lose from packs is if you Volt here you take a decent chunk but like it's not the end of the world you have Regenerator, you have Black Sludge but yeah this uh, Qon puts in work whenever it comes in on the Bulu or on the um, Lando or on a Ladi that is locked into Defog. So, yeah, so th this is there's like no reason to sack this. This is still a threat. Uh, looking at Ojama's team, I assume he's, either, he's obviously either Defog Mew or Defog uh, Cesar. If he's Defog Mew, he could be SD Cesar. That's a, that's a really nice win con for Solvent if he can uh, for Ojama. If he can get up rocks and keep up these spikes and weaken the Zard a bit, then uh, SD Cesar kind of runs through Solvent's team. So he does go on a Mew on a floor can and then he pivots into Lando and the Volt Switch. Ojama makes a fire play there. Um, there's no point in staying in for Solvent, he doesn't know if this is offensive or defensive yet. And also he's at minus 2. So you don't want to risk your Majorna. Majorna is really nice to check the Greninja and the Kyurem. If that is Ash Greninja, he needs this Majorna around for sure. Um, so I assume Ojama is going to go for u to keep up the momentum or he's going to go for his rocks here. Okay, Solvent just goes into his own lands. that is obviously a fine play. So if I'm Solvent here, um, I would just probably um, try to U-turn to get my Ladi and get the Defog off. There's not really a point in setting up his own rocks when he has to Defog. Like he's, li like he's so forced to Defog now that Teeth Spikes and rocks are up. And Ojama is either going to go to Scizor, Mew or Greninja here. If he anticipates the HP, I think he could go to Greninja. But I don't think there's a point in risking his Greninja. I think his Mew is at around 40%, so it, it might be a bit risky to go Mew on a U-turn here. But he does go on a Mew, there's the rocks. I don't really like that play, like I said, you have to defog anyway. But yeah, now um, Jama can just go for Roost here. He knows that Sowen's uh, Lando is forced out by a potential Ice Beam. Sowen doesn't have a good play here. Like, if he goes Ladi, he takes a lot from an Ice Beam. But he kind of has to go Ladi to defog, and those three months obviously 
like Zard would come in if the if the T spike wasn't up, but the T spike prevents him from like he doesn't want to go to Zard. This is threatened up by Ice Beam. Uh, Majorna would be um, would potentially get burned and would also be forced out. So here's the Roost. So uh, Ojama now knows that uh, someone is forced to defog. He can just go for Ice Beam here if he has it. Weaken the Ladi, and weakening the Ladi is really nice. Um, for if that's Ashgren, he can spam Pump, and Ladi is one of the Pump resists. Like that's and uh, Bull is another Pump resist. So if those get weakened, then Majorna and Majorna gets weakened, then he can eventually get his Ash form off. So that was a fire play Ojama. He knew by Ojama he knew Ladi was locked in the defog, so he goes back into land and gets the rocks back up. And yeah, so on is just gonna be forced to defog again, and his Ladi already took damage. So I think it was around 40 something. So it's gonna be around 30 something after the next time it comes in on rocks. So I would just... Damn, that was a risky play going hard, Greninja. He goes for rocks again. I mean, I know the rocks are still nice to pressure Ojama's cure and the team in general a bit, but... Like, he's... Uh, Someone just forced the defect way more. So Ojama goes for spikes there. Makes a really nice play knowing that... Someone wasn't gonna stay in. Um, that was a bit of a risky play by Someone because this could've potentially gone for Ice Beam. But yeah, now Ojama's obviously gonna go into Scizor. That's the best check that he has for Bulu. And the Hellas just help Ojama so much because even if someone doubles and predicts the Scizor and goes into Zard, he has to take Rocks plus Spike. I mean, he has Grassy Terrain uh, to help get some health back, but still. The um, the Hellas make it so that someone is forced to Roost more often with his Zard. And just really amazing for Ojama. So yeah, no point in not going in, uh, to Scizor here. And what would I do if I was Solent here? This is a tough turn. Like, he can... Like, try to FD and weaken the scissor, but I'm pretty sure the scissor would either um, Z move from the Buddha anyway. If he has HP fire, he could double into Coco, but I'm fairly sure he has HP eyes. So he does SD up. Um, the scissor is just gonna go for Bullet Punch, there's no reason to click anything else. Um. I feel like someone is gonna go for a Z move here and try to weaken the scissor. If this is offensive scissor, uh, maybe this can kill if this is adamant Bulu. But most of the time, jo uh, Bulu runs Jolly. You should run Jolly. Yeah, so I think this is all about pummeling Bulu, and it's gonna do a good chunk if he goes for it here. He can definitely eat a Bullet Punch. But uh, if he gets his Bulu weakened, that is like one of his Ash Gwen resists. So, like, Majunas and Ladi are the other ones, but Ladi is already low. And uh, Majuna uh, also gets pressured by Spikes plus Rocks. So, like,. I see Ashgren putting in the work later in the game for Ojama, so he does stay in and go for Bullet Punch. There is the all out pummeling, and it does do a fat chunk. I was actually thinking that would do around 80, but I did 87, so did more than I anticipated. So I can see Ojama going for a roost here, predicting the switch, and yeah, knowing that Soren wants to keep this around. And he does make that play, fire play. Um, Ojama can now go into either the Pex or the Lando here. He does go into Landris. He's gonna take a huge chunk from this if he's not defensive. Yeah, this looks to be that more offensive Lando. I think that's just Jolly. Um, yeah, this is, you obviously want Jolly on Zard. He pivots into um, Greninja on a Dragon Claw. Um, Greninja can win this game for Jama, but I still understand that he wants to keep his Lando around to intimidate us later. To get his rocks back up if someone defogs. So I understand the play there. And he can just fire off a Hydro Pump. Um, the Bulu obviously dies. It's always super low. Hazards are up. Majorna is the only potential switch in exactly because Ladi was already low. And Majorna only takes. Wow, it did nothing. It only takes 24. Solves Majorna. Super fat. But next time it switches in, um, I think it would get 2 hit KO because of um, rocks and spikes. So this Greninja is obviously um, a huge problem. He's obviously gonna save it since he wants to get his Ash later, put in the work with the Gren. Uh, Falcon was a fine play there, yeah. So Ojama is just gonna roost and Solon can Volt switch out here. He can go on Charizard here, that's like the one one that pressures Mew. If he didn't have to Zard, the Mew would kind of solo him. Uh, Coco also beats the Mew, but that's it. Coco and Zard are the only ones that beat Mew. And he's forced to Roost here. So that gives Ojama a free switch. Um, he can go into one of these three mons. If he goes into Greninja, that's a really nice offensive play, uh, anticipating the Roost. But um, that's a risky play for sure, but he makes that aggressive play, works out nicely for him. Like, Ojama's just playing the Super Bowl, like, I love how he's playing this. 
to, to like, I have to admit, like, I didn't think Ojama was that great at Sun and Moon OU, but I've been watching him for some games, and I really like how he plays. So Hydro Pump, I think, kills because Zadex doesn't get a Spadef boost. Only that Y gets a Spadef boost, uh, like, compared to regular Zard. So he can just fire off a Hydro Pump here. So one doesn't have any switch in, so as long as he hits, he gets his Ash form here. Um, Majorna gets 2 hit KO after Hazards, I assume. Lali's around 30-ish, and it dies anyway to pump, and yeah, this should also die. So he just has to hit a pump here, and then he's in a really good position. I think the Bulu is a bit too healthy to die from Hazards, because if the Bulu would die from Hazards, then uh, it would be a really nice sack for Sovin to go in the Bulu here, if it dies to Hazards, so, he that, so that Ojama doesn't get the Ash, but pretty sure that is not the case, and he would still live the Hazards and then die to pump. He would also give the Greninja um, Grassiter and Recovery. So like, I think his only play is to hope that he dodges a Hydro Pump, um, with Majorna, because Majorna can live one Hydro Pump, so going Majorna means, uh, gives him a higher chance to prevent Ojama from getting the Ash Form, because he has to hit two Hydro Pumps, um, and if he goes into anything else, Ojama only has to hit one pump. But yeah, he definitely needs the Zard, X, the Zard, um, helps him to not lose to Scissor and to Mew, so he's not staying in, that's, that's for sure. I mean, he can, actually he can also go on the Ladi and hope for a dodge. Because a Ladi is Scarf, so if it dodges, it can then threaten another Grim with a Draco. But it's, as long as the Jama can connect, he's in, whew, in a super posi good position here. And I mean, I do understand why someone is taking so long, it is a tough turn for him. But even, like, the longer you think about it, like, you... Like, it doesn't make a difference, you can think about it forever, but you just realize, uh, like, someone that's gonna realize, or he already realized probably, he al obviously already realized that he just most likely has to go over dodge, otherwise Greninja gets the Ash, and he's put in a really bad spot here. But yeah, I didn't sleep much last night, so I know there's a lot of games today, but I'll probably not be able to record that many games for you guys. I know that I think replays are down at the moment. So I think like um, a few more people are watching my videos because of that. Um, so yeah, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you all enjoy the content. I'm gonna do my best to give quality commentary, but sometimes it's just gonna be it's just gonna be bad commentary sometimes because um, like I record like sometimes I record 10 games in a row and when I'm super tired the commentary obviously gets worse. <laughs> But yeah, this is just for newer viewers. If you like have been sub to me, you already know how it how it goes. Like I just go wild sometimes and record so many games. So he does go into Jonah and does he dodge? He does dodge. That is really unfortunate for Jama. Ah oh, god. So someone's probably gonna go for Florkan or Volt Switch again here. Well, Jama's go. Okay, okay, goes on the scissor. I thought he would go on the Mew there. I think he breaked the floor can, that's why he went on the scissor, but Mew was overall, I think, uh, fine. Mew still has lefty, so like it doesn't care as much about rocks. Scissor cares a bit more about rocks, but this is still fine. Because the Zard has to, like, takes Hazard and it's kind of forced to heal here. Because if the Zard here goes for Flare Blitz, then it's super low, it takes, like, if he, like, sacks the lander here, like, goes to Pax and the Zard goes for Flare Blitz, the Rico is just annoying, like, He's just super low, he cannot come in on hazards anymore if he doesn't roost here, so he's gonna be forced to roost. Um, so that, these hazards just give Ojama free turns, since he's forced to roost. So he can go into either Greninja anticipating the roost, but that is super risky, or he can go into... Um, I feel like Lando was fine as well, but he does get the play correct, go hard into Gren again on the roost, Ojama's playing on... it's like he's super playing super well. So I'm not sure if Pump kills from 79. I assume it does a lot, but I assume it's like 70-ish. So this time he does sack off the Majorna, the pump disconnect. So he finally gets his Ash form. But yeah, if he got the Ash form earlier, Soren would have been uh, forced to go into Lali. Like, this means Greninja outspeeds the Coco. So, um, Soren is now forced to go for Draco. Psyshock obviously doesn't hit the Gren. And yeah, now this gives Scissor a roost, and Scissor kind of destroys Solwyn's team at this point if it's SD. Because, like, I already talked about this a few times, but Hazard just forced him to roost every time with the Zard. And so that's just such a big problem. But yeah, Greninja being gone all sucks a bit for Jama. That, that one was so great. Like, that one just killed everything with Pump. 
If he went to Talker back there to keep his um, Gren alive, that would have been nice as well. But I feel like his Gren was probably in range from rocks because Shodan likes to round down. But still, someone like might defog eventually, and then this, the Gren might be able to come back and get a, pick up a kill. Like let's say someone goes for defog, you go hard on the Gren, anticipating the defog. Actually, that doesn't work. Never mind, that doesn't work because the turn you would make that play, the rocks are still up. But if he would defog later on, then you could still bring the Gren back. But I definitely understand the Jamas play because. Most of the time he's gonna um, want to set up hazards, and if Solon doesn't, Solon is not gonna be able to keep defogging. So Solon also wants to keep up hazards. So like, it, like the the Greninja wasn't gonna do too too much. But yeah, this time I can see Solon going for Flare Blitz since um, Ojama just went for FD. And he's like, nah, let me go for Game real quick here with my Scissor. <laughs> I'm not sure why he went into Lando before he went into Charizard. He pretend, I think he predicted the U-turn. But this... We don't know yet. Um, I think we don't know the Jama's last move on the scissor. I think it's knockoff or U-turn. I mean, Sylvan can roost the anticip anticipating a switch because he knows that the Jama uh, needs the scissor. But damn, that's a risky... I don't know why... I don't understand why he SD'd again. Like, I understand if you stay in and predict the roost, that's a fire play. But if you if you would have gone for, like, knockoff or U-turn... No, u turn wasn't worth it to stay in because u turn is like 4 times resisted, I think. No, it's only resisted, it's not 4 times resisted. But like, it wasn't worth it to stay in to go for FD again. Because you didn't do any damage and you're, you're still forced out. So someone is definitely gonna go for Flare Blitz here. So if I'm with Jama here, I'm probably gonna Toxapex. Not sure why he FD again. Yeah, if I didn't mention it already, um, this game is taking... Um, it's, it's kind of long, right? So I'm probably gonna split this. Um, game 2 is gonna be in the next video. And depending on who wins Game 1 and Game 2, there might be a Game 3. So yeah, I'm gonna upload the entire series, obviously. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep early um, today, so I might miss some old T-series. So Toxapex barely lifts that off quick. I don't really see the point in recovering because Earthquake just does too much damage. Maybe he just wants... He's probably gonna sack his Landorus here, yeah. Pivot into Lando. Uh, so we can Dragon Claw here. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. He outspeeds the Lando. He can go for a Dragon Claw now. But yeah, Solwind can actually win this game. With like Charizard alone can win this game for Solwind. Now that the Greninja is gone, like so he goes in the Mew. Okay, okay, okay. So he wants to keep the Lando alive. Ojama's gonna go for Roost here. Um, Flabbis doesn't do enough damage with the Intimidate, so Thorne is forced out. He goes hard into Specs Coco. So, um, Ojama is kind of forced to sack his Landorus here. He does stay in, so he's probably gonna Roost to scout what uh, Solwind locks himself into. Not the biggest fan of that play, because he just took an unnecessary hit. It was pretty obvious that he was just gonna do that. Um, I, mean, I guess he predicted Dazzling Gleam because the Landos, because um, Solon wants to kill the Lando. So I kind of understand the Jamas play, but I feel like I would have just uh, sacked the Lando there. So it is SD Lando after all. So most likely he doesn't have a Scarf for then, but he has Bullet Punch and Water Shoring and he's a bulky backbone. So he's probably going to go for Z-Move here um, because that kills the, the Lando and so it makes a nice play there. As sacks of his Bulu, Bulu wasn't doing anything this game. With a scissor that um, got healthy again, and he already used his Z move. I think the scissor is healthy again, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it should be around a little bit above health, above half, is what I meant. So there was a fire play there, um, scouting for his Z move on sacking his, like wasting his Z move on the sack. Fire play by Solwind. Uh, he can now go into his Zard or into his. L mm -mm -mm. If he goes Laddie, that just gives too many monster free switch in. So I feel like he's gonna go into Coco or into Zard. But Coco also gives Ojama like kind of potential free switches into um, Toxapex on a Dazzling Gleam or into Scissor on a Dazzling Gleam. So I feel like he's just gonna go into Zarty and click Dragon Claw. Um, the grassy terrain helps him a little bit at least with the hazard thing, but yeah. Like was his, he has to take spikes plus rocks every time, but like grassy terrain obviously can't make up for that. But if Solon plays it well, I think if Zardex should have the game locked up. Um, like you just click off quick every time on the Toxapex, you click Dragon Claw versus Lando, you click Felibus versus Scissor, you click Dragon Claw versus Cume, uh, versus Mew you can roost for free and then swim Dragon Claw and Flabbit. Um You cannot even freeze the Zardex because um, Flabbit saws. So yeah, I don't see, I think someone has this game. And yeah, the pump miss on the Magiana earlier sucked a bit because yeah. 
I, like I don't really like uh, I obviously didn't go through what would have happened if he had that pump and since I'm tired I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to do that now but I feel like Ujama had a bit of a better chance to win um, like I like how Ujama played aggressive with his Greninja always coming in result but to be to be quite honest um, it also kind of hurt him because um, the minus one Dragon Claw that he took and the rocks that he kept taking um, just put his Greninja super like his Greninja just got weakened. Like if his Greninja was one more healthy, like and still could have came in on rocks, then he just won him the game. So maybe he could have played that a bit different. But like overall, Ojama played this game like fire. So the only reason Toxapex can um, wall this out at the moment is because Grassy Terrain is up. Um, so Grassy Terrain is up means that Grassy Terrain being up means that uh, Earthquake is weakened and Toxapex gets Grassy Terrain recovery plus Black Sledge recovery. But now that the terrain ended, he's gonna be forced to sack his Lando here. Uh, he doesn't even get an intimidate on the. He doesn't even get an intimidate on the Zard. Um, I would roost here if I was Solon because um, the Lando sack is so obvious. He doesn't have to make that play because he just wins the game anyway with the Zard. But that would be a nice play. Um, the the Lando has the rocks. Oh yeah, he doesn't even get the intimidate off. But yeah, obviously, um, I think I didn't even mention that he could have gone to Pex because uh, Grassy Turin was absolutely walled the Zard for a few turns there. So um. I don't know if I mentioned it yet in this video, but Toxic on Toxapex might become more popular. Um, like it's, uh, we already see it sometimes. It's really nice for um, for Zapdos's so that they can defog your Toxic spikes away the entire game. It's nice for stuff like incoming Coco. I know you can try to scald burn him and just get up a T spike, but it's also nice for Coco. Uh, it's nice for Ladi. It's nice for Zard X. Um, there's another one that I forgot for that it's really nice for. It's nice for Mew because Mew is also one of the ones that comes in and wants to defog your T spikes away. And you can just speed up the game if you're toxic the opposing Mew with a Toxapex. So I assume, yeah, if, if Zard keeps uh, being like used that X, uh, I th think we can like see a rise in toxic use on Toxapex, the move toxic. So yeah, this game is just over. Uh, Sovan can just click uh, Flabbits here. And like I said, he cannot even get frozen because Flabbits saws. Um, he obviously didn't get intimidated because the Lando died to rocks, I already said that. And yeah, Krim dies to Dragon Claw, everything else dies to Flabbits, Toxapex dies to Earthquake. Like these, the Mew and the Sassalite Blitz. So he switches out, um... Not really 100% sure why he switched out. He sacks off the Lando, so I guess he wants to defog? He's gonna defog here for his Zard, but like... Didn't he just win with his Zard? Did I miss- am I missing something? What is Zard- was his Zard intimidated and I missed it? I'm not sure. I don't think he had to switch out, but yeah, he, um, I guess he wants to make sure that if Zard doesn't win, um, that his that his Coco wins. Like he, I think he might go Coco here. Yeah. Okay. 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 I understand what he did. I, okay. I understand what he did. So he didn't want to have rocks and toxic spikes and spikes up. Um, so he did sack that to defog, and now he can go into Coco and click specs thund Thunderbolt. But I'm um, not sure. I feel like Zard won the game anyway. Um, like it would have taken a while maybe because the Muse still had roost and everything, but he could have fished for like Flabbit's burn as well. I don't know, I thought Zard just won the game. Maybe I'm missing something. I mean if he clicks Dazzling Gleam here and catches the Cure on his switch, that would be fire for him. But I assume he's just gonna click T-Bolt. Actually he can Volt Switch here. Volt Switch is a fire play. Yeah, yeah Volt I feel Volt Switch is a fire play here. Because um, if the Mew stays in, you get a free switch and a Zard. If the Kyurem comes out, you get your Zard and click Dragon Claw. Like, I, I feel like if you go for T-Bolt here and... The Kyurem might lift to T-Bolt instead of Roll. I think Volt Switch did 31 to Kyurem if I recall correctly. So T-Bolt probably 2 it KOs. Yeah, if T-Bolt 2 it KOs the Kyurem, I guess then he doesn't lose anything from clicking T-Bolt. But if Ojama sacks his Mew to T-Bolt and then goes into Kyurem, then he can potentially roost on a Coco. But I think, yeah, I think he cannot roost outside of he cannot roost outside of Dragon Claw range because T-Bolt does too much. No, maybe if the ter Electric Terrain ends. No, I think even if Electric Terrain ends, it still does too much. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm really kind of su surprised by this end game. I thought that Zardex just won, but someone just switched into. Hmm. I mean, I kind of understand because Specs Coco like. Uh, does more damage to the Mew, so like with if you like see this is what I'm talking about. Now you can roost up and get outside of Dragon Claw range. That's why I felt like he should have just stayed in with Zard. Um, 
Did he reveal Flabbits yet? I'm pretty sure he revealed Flabbits yet. If he didn't have Flabbits, it would be a different story, but I think he revealed it yet. But yeah, someone is just gonna click this. He's obviously if he goes hard into Zard, he can lose. That's like he shouldn't go hard into Zard and risk it. Yeah, he's, he's just gonna keep it clicking it. But yeah, um, I don't know why he didn't roost there because next turn the electric terrain would have ended. Uh, it probably didn't make a difference. But his only his only hope was that he roosted, 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 and when terrain ended, then T build does less. But since he's life orb, he still would have taken um, enough recoil to be in dragon claw range anyway. Even if he wasn't life orb, I think he would still would have been in range. But I like. Maybe some low roll, like he had to hope for some low roll, so he had to like roost and try to keep his QM healthy. But to be fair, he didn't really, like he couldn't really do that. Um, so yeah, Thorin still played that fine. I feel like Zard won the game anyway. But I guess he, I, I feel like maybe that sped up the process a little bit, going to Coco first. In my opinion, Zard won anyway. But like I said, the Mew would have been roosted, it might have taken a bit longer. He would have taken recoil, he would have been forced to roost with Zard. Uh, see, the now it's the same scenario, the only difference is... No, it's still the same scenario. The only difference is that the Scizor and the Kyurma are already dead. Yeah, I feel like you could've just stayed in with the Scizor. <laughs> uh, with the Zard, not with the Scizor. Like, I don't know why he made all that switch out and defoxing. Like, Zard, Zard kinda just won. Like, as soon as the Grassy turn ended and he couldn't intimidate the Zard anymore, but yeah, the pump misses sucked, and yeah, Thorn is gonna win this game now, it's just a matter of time. He's gonna flare bits here. I just ran close, okay. I mean, that does a good chunk, to be fair. Like, I feel like Ujama has to, like, roost spam. Okay, that killed as well. So he should've roosted last turn then. But, like, yeah, the, the game was over anyway. So now he's gonna off quick twice, he says GG. I'll see you guys with game 2 in the next video. It was a cool game overall. Yeah, GG out of respect, because you have the pump dodge. Mm. So, um, Ojama does lose game 1, unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure he can bring it back. He played pretty nice. And I hope for like no stall in a nice match in game 2. So see you guys then. Um, I have like, like 3 or 4 more snake games recorded. Um, so that's might be coming, but they might not be coming today. They might be coming the next day since I'm super tired. We shall see. Thank you guys for watching. Um, stay tuned for game two. And yeah, this is actually a, a really nice game overall. So yeah, peace out, friends.